everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So working some more on the pillar of the garden wall, working sort of at the bottom of this, uh, this pass here. As you can probably tell, I'm not working strictly in a diagonal sense because, uh, yeah, the pattern that the colors are making, I'm kind of following it. So I'm a little out of order here, kind of following the way that it naturally wants to slope instead of my usual way so yeah it kind of goes like this and then it sort of goes like this again so it'll end up back the way i usually slope things so yeah we're having actually a nice fairly nice day it was apparently set new records for a uh, warm weather in in autumn the last couple of weeks because yeah looking at previous years we often have a we have snow by this time but it's been it's been nice nice enough to go out for walks without needing to bundle up or anything so yeah yeah my uh, husband's gonna be away for a bit he's heading out today go back up to uh, Northwest Territories. This is supposed to be the last big trip for this uh, this year. They try not to do trips in the winter when they can help it. Only when things break and can't be repaired remotely. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen. <laughs> but yeah, like I've said in previous videos, it's all of the maintenance trips that were put off since 2020 are having to be done now so they can't they can't wait any longer so yeah yeah he actually had to go early on in 2020 and it was a lot of uh paperwork to be able to get up there yeah because it's a uh, it was considered a vulnerable area and uh so yeah they had special sort of quarantine measures in place so he had to go and get tested and get paperwork in order to show that he hadn't been in contact with anyone who potentially had been ill and yeah it was a whole thing and then yeah when he was up there he, like he couldn't go anywhere except the hotel and the workplace he had to have food delivered to the office and stuff so he said yeah it kind of sucks like you know first time up there and you can't even be a tourist <laughs> oh yeah so they had him there for two weeks and he was scheduled to sort of be his normal monday to friday and then have the weekend off and then work again and he just said ah forget it he worked through the weekend so he could come home a couple of days earlier because he said what was the point yeah if he had the weekend off it would have been just sitting in the hotel watching tv <laughs> so yeah he said, I'd rather just get the work out of the way sooner and get to come home. So, yeah. But yeah, he's going to be gone for a whole week this time. So I had to uh, pause the meal kit service because, yeah he would be gone so long and I can't eat the whole thing myself. That's six meals. S except um, I find the one that we use, uh, Chef's Plate, at least one of the meal kits, usually we get two dinners out of it. It's big enough that we get, yeah, so that's four servings. So I'm like, yeah, I can't eat like eight servings of food in like three or four days by myself for dinner. So yeah. I just, uh, I just skipped that week, so. <sighs> yeah, and then for Thanksgiving, I actually didn't make any dessert this year because he was going to be away. Usually I make a great big cheesecake, but yeah, if he's going to be away, then we won't be able to eat it in time kind of thing, so. So instead I bought some some pumpkin muffins so we could have something pumpkin-y because usually I make a pumpkin cheesecake. Yeah, it's pretty good. Because I'm not a big pie fan. I don't know. I just... 
pastry isn't really my thing. I much prefer the richness of a cheesecake, so yeah. I make eggnog cheesecake at Christmas. Well, also because I can't drink eggnog, so yeah. Milk doesn't agree with me. I'm fine with it if it's baked for long enough. Um, and uh, yeah, like cheese seems to be okay, I think because like the bacteria in it helps you to digest it, but just straight milk, I can't. Yeah, it hurts my stomach and it makes me so exhausted the next day. Like I have to sleep like an extra three, four hours. It makes me feel like I'm coming down with something even though I'm not, it's, yeah, it's awful. So it's not worth it. Like people say, I tell them I can't eat this. It'll make me so tired. And they're like, oh, that's fine. I'm like, no, you don't understand. This isn't just like the normal tired. This is like somebody drugged you feeling tired. Like can't stand up straight. Yeah, it's feels like you've been sedated kind of thing. It's it's not fun. <laughs> so yeah, it's not worth the few minutes of enjoyment I get from eating it and then hours of recovery. Yeah. Like even after um I sleep it off, you know, a couple of extra hours, I'm still totally just like dragging myself through the day. It's yeah, it's not worth it. So Ooh. Goodness, pardon me, talking about being tired. <laughs> yeah, so there was enough wind the last few days that uh, the neighbor's tree across the street is completely bare of leaves now. <laughs> Our apple tree is still hanging on a little bit. Those ones are quite stubborn. <laughs> I don't know, maybe fruit trees hang on to them longer. Or it could just be our trees might be a little more sheltered from the wind too because it's sort of behind the house and there's the garage and yeah. So it's not quite as open, so that could be it too. There's a bit of a wind break keeping it from uh, knocking all those leaves off. But yeah, before we know it, it's going to be Halloween. So yeah, like I say, I adjust my stitching to the shape that just sort of makes sense. Follow the colors. Oops, that's not going to work. I hate when I do that. Caught another thread with my working thread. So yeah, as you can see, this is where I'm cutting off this pass here, getting close to the edge of my frame there. And then let's see. Yeah, so this is like line 400 is about here and it's 550 wide, I think. So yeah, we are slowly getting there, but I think it's going to take a couple more months to uh, get this pass completed. So that's my goal for the end of the year, to have this pass completed and possibly start it on the next one. We'll see. And I believe there's nine total. Let's see, I have a little chart I made here. Yeah, there's nine total, so there'll be seven to go. Yeah, talking about end of the year. Husband put up the uh, Christmas lights the other day. Had to go and buy new hooks for them though because they were so brittle that yeah, when he was trying to hang the lights off them, they just snapped. Yeah, the extreme temperatures and the sun bleach in them, they don't last very long. So 
Yeah, I remember, I'm trying to think. We've been married a couple years and we decided to put lights on our house. And this was before LED lights were really a thing and they were super expensive, you know. Like I think they just sort of come out around then. It was around 2004 or something, but they were really, really expensive. So we had the old style incandescent lights and uh, we hung those up and we uh we we had the lights on but not that much like it was just you know when it got dark in the evening and then around 10 at night we go to sleep so we turn the lights off but yeah we got our our uh electricity bill in january and it was like twice as much it was like okay we're not doing that again because <laughs> yeah judging yeah now led lights are are cheap and they don't take hardly any uh any energy to run because yeah old lights were like i think they said something like 90 percent of the um energy they produced was lost as heat so and i can believe it because i remember there were times with the really big outdoor lights if it snowed they would burn holes in the snow they got that hot yeah i remember my um in-laws had the icicle lights, which were really popular um, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And um, it said on them, you know, uh, you can only collect, connect, I think it was like 15 sets of lights because anything more and they might overheat and cause a fire. So yeah, yeah, it was wild. Yeah, those icicle lights, I remember. They were really popular. They weren't really my thing though. They weren't my favorite, yeah. Yeah, or I remember one year, Christmas day, we were going to my parents' house and we got halfway there. They lived in the next town. And I realized, oops, I left the lights on, on the tree. And the tree was, you know, dry and dead. Like I hadn't watered it enough. And so it was like, yeah, with those old incandescent lights, it wouldn't take much to start a fire. So we had to turn around and go home to turn them off and call my parents, say, sorry, we're going to be late. Yeah, because we don't want to risk burning the house down. Ooh. Yeah, that was when we still lived in the uh, military quarters. Yeah, little rancher house, but... Uh... Yeah, it was nice because it was actually cheaper than what we'd been paying for an apartment. And, uh, you know, we actually got like three bedrooms <laughs> and our own uh, our own laundry room. So that was really nice. Yeah, we bought uh, the washer dryer set then and they're still running. So knock on wood because, yeah, they really don't make appliances like they used to. It's really frustrating they don't make things to last so they want people to have to keep buying and buying them i remember reading that there was a very big difference in the quality of corning wear after a certain year yeah like i think they said pre-90s those things lasted forever and stuff made after that they changed the the formula that they make it with so that yeah, they just don't last as long. <laughs> yeah, that was one of those things I read that it was kind of created by accident. Yeah. Guy was experimenting with stuff and discovered when he made it that it was basically indestructible when he accidentally dropped it on the floor. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I had a book of how many things were discovered by accident. Like they had um, with uh, vulcanized rubber and... The guy was trying different chemical things with it and nothing worked. And then one time as he was putting the sample that he was working on, he was trying to put it up on the shelf. He dropped it on top of his wood stove and discovered that it was with this, I think it was sulfur and heating it was what made the difference, made it so that it was pliable, wouldn't crack and it wouldn't melt. It remained stable. So yeah. Or like they said, you know, one of the greatest uh, medical discoveries, penicillin was by accident. Yeah. Okay. Do, do, do. Okay, so. Fill in. So, like I said, I'm not following my normal 
slope here, but I am still trying to sort of grow out from the established edge, even if it's not a straight one. Still trying to keep from closing in things too much. So, oh, there goes the neighbor's dog again. Oh, yeah, he barks a lot. Can get quite wearing on the nerves sometimes. Yeah. The problem is it's one dog starts it and then the other neighbor's dog across the fence responds and then they just bark back and forth at each other all day long. Oh, yeah. I've been enjoying this warmer weather, but I don't know. That's one nice thing in the winter. They're indoors, so I don't have to hear them all darn day. Oh. Yeah, I said like it's, it's not constant, but it's enough to be irritating that every time they start up again, it's like, oh brother, here we go again. Uh. And I'm not someone who wants like noise on all the time to drown them out. So yeah, I just kind of have to deal. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I hope these colors are showing up well enough for you to see. Just happen to be light colors here, not much I can do about that. Yeah, so like I said, my husband's going up to Northwest Territories, but he's flying this time, not driving, because yeah, it is a long drive. I think it's 11 hours. So, yeah, he went during the summer. Our son was uh, hired as a temporary assistant, and uh, so they drove up. Yeah, he actually took a picture. I have it on my Instagram. There was a big bear family went across the, uh, across the highway. <laughs> yeah, wildlife gets the right of way. <laughs> yeah, and the, uh, the speed limit is slower, like... Um, when we go to uh, visit family in BC, we go through Jasper National Park and uh, yeah, everything is 20, even 30 kilometers slower than the regular freeway because it's a big windy road and yeah, sometimes you'll turn the corner and there's, you know, a bunch of uh, mountain goats on the road and yeah, they don't care about the, uh, about the vehicles. They will just happily stay there until they feel like moving, so. Oh, I parked that one wrong. I realized as soon as I put this up here, that this one here is, yeah, up one row. It's higher than it should be. I counted wrong when I was parking it. And then one nice thing, the grid lines let me, help me to figure out which one of these was wrong. Since one of them had to be off, because it did not match. Yeah, so they're still not calling for snow in the next two weeks, so I'm going to enjoy that as long as possible. Yeah, I'm a little nervous because uh, this will be my son's first winter as a driver. So, I mean, he had practice. He took um, driver's ed class in school, and they did go out when it was icy so that the kids could, into parking lots and stuff, so that the kids could get experience and what it feels like to drive on snow and ice and how to keep control of the vehicle. But yeah, I always know I hate that first drive, especially with the first snowfall of the winter. Yeah. <clears throat> Not so much for myself, but I find a lot of people sort of forget that you do need to slow down and they kind of try to drive like it's still, you know, bare dry roads and it's not. <laughs> Yeah, you got to give yourself more room than you think, just in case, because, yeah, I've done that before where I started braking and realized, oh, shoot, I should have given myself a few more meters. And thankfully, I've never had where I wasn't able to stop in time, but I've had a few moments of, yeah, heart in the throat going, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> uh. 
And there's always people who want to tailgate you even when it's icy. Like, come on. <laughs> Give it just a few more seconds so that we can avoid having an accident because those suck. <laughs> so honestly, I find the worst part is all the freaking paperwork you got to deal with afterwards. Ugh. Yeah, such a pain. Like, thankfully... The ones I was in, I got rear-ended, so I wasn't badly injured. And the car wasn't, you know, destroyed, but, oh, still, such a big pain to have to go through. Yeah, I hate doing that, so. Okay, so let's take a look here. All right, I'm just going to take a look at both of these parked yellow threads. Okay, and this one up here. This one up here is not very long. Yeah. Let's see if it's enough to make it all the way down this section here or not. It's going to be a close thing, I think. Yeah, so I talking about wildlife. I had to tape my uh my oven range hood vent cover closed again because that bird came back. <laughs> Tried to make a home in there, so yeah, I had to chase him off and tape it shut again. Darn thing. <laughs> so I'll have to be really careful not to try and burn anything in my kitchen. Because, yeah, my fan won't be able to vent outside. It'll just blow it around the room, which isn't very helpful. But, yeah, I don't know. We need to get some kind of, like, a wire cage or something to put around that that exhaust, I guess, so that... Yeah, the cover can still open and let the let any smoke out, but the birds won't be able to get in. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, you gotta be careful because I was curious and looked it up, and apparently once they've built a nest, you're not allowed to move it. Yeah. At least in Canadian law. So yeah, you have to catch them before they do that. If they're investigating the place but they haven't built a nest yet, yeah. You better make sure you block off access so they don't. Because, <laughs> yeah, we had the same thing above our bedroom window. The um, One of the uh, shingles had kind of curled up a little bit, and there was a little bit of space under it. Some birds were wanting to build a nest in there. And, yeah, it's like, okay, that's why they were so loud, because they were literally right outside our window. <laughs> and so, yeah, my husband had to go and make sure that that shingle was properly nailed back down so that there's no space. Like I said, we have trees in our backyard that they are welcome to nest in. Yeah, because I was kind of looking to see ways to keep them away. And uh, I made a little spray. They said you have some, they don't like mint or or lemon smells. So if you have a bit of essential oil, yeah and you spray it there, they won't like the smell and they won't stay. So there's that too. And of course it won't harm them, so. Yeah. Just wanna repel them, I don't wanna, don't wanna hurt them. <laughs> okay, so. Just. So trying to keep from Closing things in, although it will happen a little bit since this is sloping this way, but that's okay. There are no rules, except the ones you make yourself, as Karen the Needlebug likes to say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so once I fill in all of this area, it will be time to head back up to the top and we'll be working on some vines. So that should be, that should be interesting. Quite a lot of colors there. Because yeah, I haven't had many high confetti areas to stitch in the last while. Hmm. 
Sort of rock boat, right? Yeah, I have to think about shopping for Christmas gifts before I know it. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, this year's flown on by. Yeah, last year, <clears throat> pardon me, for my husband's parents, I bought uh, I bought some stuff through um, our son's school fundraiser. Because I figured, hey, you know, two birds <laughs> will uh, get the gift giving taken out of the way and help support the school. And I shipped it as a gift with their names on it, but they ended up getting it delivered with my son's name on it. And I had to explain, no, it was supposed to come to your house. We bought it through him, but yeah, it was funny. Yeah, it was like a tower of boxes and they had different treats in it. So one was like caramel popcorn and another was, you know, pretzels and another was, yeah, like chocolates and things. So yeah. Plus, the boxes were these nice decorative ones you could keep and reuse, so. Yeah, my husband and I always just have a budget now when we buy our own stuff because we know exactly what we want. Yeah, I find having to think of stuff <clears throat> can be stressful sometimes. Yeah, rather make sure we get stuff we're actually going to use than just more stuff to clutter up things. Yeah, I did a big house decluttering a few years ago, and I've been trying to keep from letting things build back up too much. Yeah, it was the first one I had to really do because before that, used to move a lot. So you sort of end up purging a lot of stuff when you move because, yeah, when you start packing, you realize, yeah, I don't really need this or that or the other, but... Yeah, when I did the big house purge, we've been living here like 10 years. So, yeah, a lot of stuff had accumulated over the years. Okie dokie. Oh, goodness, pardon me. said 23% by the end of this month is my adjusted goal and we're at 21.67 so I think that's doable we shall see yeah I haven't had as much stitching done the last few days I was just really tired so yeah I was sort of the uh, not tired enough to actually sleep but too tired to concentrate yeah it was sort of like if I force myself to keep stitching not only am I not going to enjoy it because I'm you know brains is scrambled eggs but uh yeah I'm gonna probably just make mistakes I gotta fix later and it'll just take more time in the long run so yeah I did something with that took less brain power and played games on my phone <laughs> I'm uh, I, my favorite game is this uh, Tiki Solitaire Tri Peaks, and uh, you can join a team where you work together to earn prizes and stuff, and it's quite fun. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm happy with the team I'm in, but other teams keep on uh, keep on uh, trying to recruit me. So, <laughs> but yeah, some of them like their requirements are wild. Like they want people to basically play all day, like it's a full time job, and it's like no, I just want to have fun. I don't want it to be a huge time suck. It's just something to pass the time, not take up all my time. So. Yeah, I might after a while change my name on the game to say no invites after my name. Because, yeah, I joined years ago when I was part of a team for a while. Then I, I quit the game. So when I came back, I took the no invites off of my name, screen name. So I may put it back so that people stop bugging me. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think the team I'm in is a, is a good fit for me. I've been there. Let me think almost two months now yeah and i'm quite happy with it we basically we get all the prizes but like i said it's not like they expect you to be playing all day like it's a full-time job because yeah i want it to still be fun and that would not be fun for me yeah so this is some scroll work i guess or whatever on this on this part of the pillar so that's why the colors kind of make these, yeah. I don't know what you would call it, fluted maybe? I'm not sure, but yeah. That's the way the de design is, so of course that's why the colors follow that, that shape there. Yeah, I did a similar thing when I was working on the top of the peacock's wing. It sloped this way and I just followed it and then filled in the sky around it afterwards. I find if I tried to force it to slope this way, I'd end up with a lot more uh, needles on threads and then it would get tangled more easily. So I find just adjusting to follow the shape that it naturally makes. Yeah, makes it easier. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> yeah, I gave myself a bit of a goose egg the other day. I stood up into the corner of the counter in my, in my kitchen. Ugh. Yeah, my husband heard me yell and he came. He said, well, this is why you should close the cupboard doors. I said, it was the corner of the counter. That doesn't matter whether the cupboard doors are open or not. I do have a bad habit of leaving them open. He's right. But yeah, I didn't crack my head on the cupboard door. <laughs> it was on the corner of the counter. Oh, But thankfully, not hard enough to cause any lasting damage. I didn't split the skin or need stitches or anything. So, yeah. It stung, but... I'll live. <laughs> yeah, it's not like one time when I was a kid, I didn't realize that I was sort of half under my desk and I literally tried to jump to my feet and yeah, I caught my head right on the corner of it and I just about knocked myself out cold. So yeah, that was a bad one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, thankfully this was just more annoying. Oh, I clunked my head. So yeah, this way with following this curve, I can sort of stick with this one piece of thread all the way down and it goes a little quicker. And then we'll slowly fill this in. So you can see probably from looking at the pattern keeper with this color, it starts to slope back the other way. So we'll fill that in. And then once this is all filled in, I think it'll be time to move my frame, yeah, because I've got quite a few columns from the left-hand side there. So it'll be time to move my frame and go back up to the top of this pass and start again.
Oh, there's the mail carrier out delivering stuff. And they must be enjoying this warmer weather. Yeah, they gotta walk outside even when it's 40 below. <laughs> yeah, we actually had a postal person who had to fill up the um, mailboxes along one of the roads, and they actually would drive the wrong way down the road rather than walk. And yeah, they go down the road and go up the window so that they could go from the driver's side. So they would do the one side the normal way and then they would drive the wrong way to get the other side. And yeah, it always made me so nervous. They had their hazards on his stuff, but like, yeah, it always made me anxious. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not legal, but yeah. Yeah, I remember because at the time, where I worked was close to uh, where I lived. So we had the same uh, mail carrier for both for home and work. And uh, one time they, I had ordered something that needed to be signed for and they brought it to my workplace knowing that I wouldn't be home at the time. But it was like one of the few times that I was actually homesick. So <laughs> yeah. But they allowed one of my coworkers signed for it and they left it on my desk. But yeah, it was kind of funny because it was a movie and I actually wouldn't have minded getting it at home when I was sick. But yeah, they assumed I wouldn't be there. So <laughs> they were trying to be helpful and it didn't actually work out that way. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that was one of my duties at that job was to... Because we didn't get it usually delivered right to the actual door. They would go in the post box. And uh, yeah, I'd have to go over to the post box and get all the, the mail. And I remember one time, because um, it was a, a family owned business. And so their son got something addressed to him and it turned out to be some kind of sample. It was like a really nice pen or something from a company. And my boss sort of as a joke says, you know, yeesh, you should have opened this and seen what it was and given it to me. And I said, well, I can't open his mail. It's a federal offense. <laughs> Because it wasn't just addressed to the workplace, right? It was addressed to him personally. It's quite funny. Uh. Okay. Filling this in. Actually thinking ahead, I think I'll do those two right there as well. They're kind of connected, so I might as well. Yeah, I actually remember there was a kerfuffle a few years back. They were going to um, end door-to-door -door mail delivery and have everybody just have post box. I think except for people like 
people who were disabled and wouldn't be able to could apply to get their stuff delivered straight to their house and such. But uh, yeah, people were really mad. It ended up not happening. Yeah, for me, it wasn't such a big deal because I lived in quite a few places where, yeah, we didn't get stuff delivered to our house. You had to go to the collection of mailboxes for the key to go and get your stuff. But yeah, there was such an outcry that I guess they backed down and decided not to, not to go through with it. Okay purple one there. Yeah, I had someone ask, they didn't realize I followed a pattern and so they said like, do you make this up as you go along? I said, oh no, because a lot of times there are colors that I wouldn't expect to use. And even as I'm stitching them, think this looks odd like it's not going to work but then once you've got everything blended together it does yeah I could not keep all that in my head <laughs> yeah no it's definitely a pattern all the way come on okay I was thinking I might have to trim that but we got it to work Yeah, so my father-in-law said some friends gave them a bunch of apples. So, yeah, he wanted to know my uh, apple juice making technique. I said, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> so, yeah, I sent him a link to the video I put up about how I do it. Yeah, it was funny after I finished making all of our apples into juice and a neighbor came by trying to give off bags to everybody and I said oh well unfortunately yeah I have almost a hundred liters of juice from ours so I'm gonna have to say no <laughs> thank you but yeah I got more than I know what to do with I'll be giving away a lot of it this year I think I gave some to the neighbors my husband took some into work, yeah. My cupboard where I keep my preserves is pretty much full, almost completely. Yeah, we'll see what we get next year. Usually we don't get two big years in a row. This was the biggest, biggest harvest we ever had. Of course, we do have two trees now, not just one, but yeah, we had one year when I had just the one tree and uh, we got 90 liters of juice out of it. But then a couple years later, we got like seven. So yeah, you really can't tell. But yeah, now that we have two trees, the last year was almost a hundred. So that was just, that was wild. <laughs> yeah, I was really glad that uh, my husband was off work that week. And so he helped me by coring and cutting out all the apples for me so I didn't have to do it. I did a few, but he did like 99% of them. So I just had to do the rest of it, the juicing, the draining, the canning it. Yeah, we also got a bit more too, because usually I make the concentrate and I let it sit overnight and any remaining sediment that I didn't manage to um, to strain out with the towels would be at the bottom and I'd sort of pour it until the last inch and discard that. But uh, then I have now a, a uh, filter that's made for wine decanting. So I now pour it through that after it's been strained. And so that worked really well, it got the very last bits of sediment that the towels didn't get. Yeah, I added that step in. So that meant I could retain the last, you know, cup of juice from each, uh, from each gallon container that I used to discard. So, I mean, that was probably an extra, let me think, 
Hmm. Yeah, I ended up with 20 liters of concentrate. That was just wild. So, I mean, that's like an extra gallon right there. So, yeah, after you add all the... It was probably about an extra five liters of juice that were saved because of that. So, yeah. It's not a lot, but when you're doing it on a big scale, yeah, it adds up. Yeah, so it took a few years to really perfect the uh, the technique. Okay. So, back to this one. smooth that out. It was kind of twisted on itself all funny, which I didn't like. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if my son is planning to dress up for anything this year for Halloween. At school, I get to have a costume day. Yeah, a couple of years in a row he went as Yoshi because uh, he has a Yoshi onesie pajamas. So yeah, he had a nice excuse to wear his jammies to school. <laughs> Be nice and comfy. But yeah, I had that as a suggestion for somebody was saying like, their kid doesn't like costumes because they're often uncomfortable. And I said, well, you know, there's a lot of really cute onesie pajamas you can get. And I'll bet he'd be okay with wearing those, yeah. Plus, you'll get more use out of it than just one year. Because, yeah, they're pajamas, so you can keep using them as pajamas. So, yeah, they were quite happy because, yeah, there's a lot of cute ones. Okay, now well, there's that dog again. Like I said, it's just enough to be irritating. <laughs> oh, because he stopped for a bit and then he starts up again. Yeah. Getting into slightly darker colors here now. As we get sort of these shadowy bits on this decorative. 
stone work here. This pillar. Yeah, it was funny. My uh, my sister had a theory. She said, dogs are like toddlers and cats are like teenagers. I'm thinking, yeah, I think she's onto something. <laughs> yeah. Cats will give you attitude. They just don't care. <laughs> like, it's funny. They said cats can make more different vowel sounds than dogs, so they could like do the talking thing more easily but they don't yeah they don't care what we want yeah i wouldn't mind having cat but my husband is allergic so yeah we go to visit people who have a cat he has to load up on claritin and he can only he can only handle <laughs> A limited amount of time at once so yeah having one in our house is just not not gonna happen <laughs> well plus there is also the worry like people said they had to be careful because you know cat plays with if you stitch like I do with threads hanging yeah cats love to play with those so yeah there is that that's one nice thing when I leave my my stitching aside I know nobody's going to touch it but me <laughs> Yeah, if I was going to get another pet, I'd probably get more guinea pigs, but yeah, I haven't yet. It's just hard because they don't live that long. Yeah, six to eight years. Our guinea pig, she lived almost nine years. She was very long living piggy but it's never long enough right yeah we never have enough time with our our furry friends okay so yes yeah, some of this is going to be out of order just because of the way i followed this color but i will try to keep from closing things in as much as possible as i grow it out from that corner outwards and then yeah as i said it starts to slope this way again with the colors so soon we'll be back onto our usual track <laughs> man this uh, hour is just blown by not quite an hour but getting close to it yeah Yeah, saying my husband's flying instead of driving, but he has to fly out from the next big city, which is like three and a half hours away. So, yeah, it kind of works out to the same in the end of how long he's away from home. Yeah, so. Well, he's got some friends that live in the city there, so he's going to go a day early and, and visit with them since he doesn't often get the chance before he has to fly out, he figured why not, yeah. Yeah, it was wild. One of my friends said her husband, he got in trouble for, he had a long trip and somebody he knows on the way back, um, he stopped at his house to visit him and then drove home and yeah, they gave him heck for not following the prescribed route. They said he should have driven all the way home and driven back in his own car. Like, he even said, I'll pay for the gas for the detour that was like 20 minutes, you know. But, ugh. Yeah, we're really lucky with um, the place my husband works. They don't mind if we use the vehicle for personal use. As long as we don't overdo it. They say as long as you say sort of below the 10%, then they don't mind so yeah 
which is really nice. Especially since because it's a bigger vehicle, I get motion sick less in it for long car trips. So, goodness, that dog again. He just will not be quiet. Oh, so don't dogs ever get tired of barking? Like, do they not get sore throat or what? Oh, goodness. Yeah, he's a big German shepherd, so he's got quite a loud, quite a loud bark. Because when I was a kid, we had a we had a chocolate lab for a while, and she didn't she didn't really bark much. It was really rare. Yeah, and my my sister had a her dog, I think. So that was considered my dog, and then her dog was like I think a collie or a sheep dog mix. You know the ones that they use to um to round up the sheep, the black and white. She had part of that in her. Yeah. It was funny because I remember we had a thunderstorm and my dog just didn't care. Didn't bother her at all. I opened the door to let them in and there was a really loud clap of thunder and she kind of just looked at the sky like, oh, what was that? And my sister's dog, she just, yeah, beelined in the house like, like crazy. And uh, she was whining the whole night for as long as the storm was on. It was like she couldn't see you. You know, you try to sit there and pet her and comfort her, and she just looked sort of right through you and was whining the whole time. Yeah, she didn't like it at all. Yeah, it's funny how different animals respond differently. So, yeah, I hope that barking isn't bothering you like it does me. Yeah. We'll see how much it picks up. I'm not sure. Because sometimes there's sounds I think that my camera will pick up for sure and it doesn't. And then I had one time I was making a piano video and it was raining outside. And I didn't think you'd be able to hear the sound of the rain over the piano, but you actually could. So, Because <laughs> it wasn't like it was a loud rainstorm. It was just regular rain. And yeah, but you could hear, you could hear it in the background. So... Yeah, I'd been trying for months to get the piece on film, and I finally got it without any mistakes. So I was like, okay, well, sorry about the water noise, but deal with it. Because <laughs> I'm not doing it again. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I'll just work on this sort of strip here for a bit before I fill in towards it again. Yeah, just kind of jumping all over the place whenever I feel like it. Let's see. Or I might decide, yeah, maybe I will actually work on filling this in for now. <laughs> really doesn't matter, I suppose. But I guess this way I add one fewer thread for now. So there's that. So yeah, like I said, some closing in is inevitable when I decide to go out of my normal stitching direction, but that's okay. I'm not that concerned about it.
going to set that one aside for now and that one as well just get those out of my way for the moment until I get back to them Yeah, either way, we're going to be doing things a little out of order here. Past two hundred. Oops, I did not go back down correctly, which means that loop will not pop to the back if I didn't come up or go back down exactly where the needle came up. It will not work. It's got to be exactly in the same spot or it won't. Yeah, it was like revolutionary for me when I discovered you could do that. <laughs> do the loop start from the front and never turn my work now, which is really nice. Okay. Okay, so I think I will be calling it a day soon. Do a bit more. Yeah, I'm always excited when it's I've done enough to move my frame again and get to spread it all out, take a take a progress picture. Some days it can feel like you're not making much progress, but then, yeah. But then about, find I move my frame about once a week. It sort of, again, depends 
on how much I get done, but yeah. So it can sometimes feel like you're not making a lot of progress, but then at the end of the week when you can take a picture and see the progress you made since the last time you spread it out to take a picture, yeah, can be uh, help give you that motivation to keep going. I know there was someone saying they have an app, I think called Stitch Pal or something, where they, um, they take daily pictures yeah, to keep their progress. I have a spreadsheet on my computer, so that's good enough for me. I just take a note of my total off of Pattern Keeper every stitching day and enter it in the spreadsheet does it for you. I can't remember what Facebook group I found it on. Somebody made it and made it available. I could download and use it. I think it might have been for the love of diagonal cross stitching, but I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I like, I'm a nerd who likes the the number crunching, as long as I don't have to do it myself. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's a, it's a computer doing that work for you. Otherwise, I don't like the math, so. I don't think I could have programmed the spreadsheet myself, just have to use it, so. But yeah, sort of have a tab in each for each project and it tells you <clears throat> pardon me if you keep to your goal when you can expect to finish and stuff like that so yeah that's pretty cool <coughs> pardon me a little bit of smoke in the air still so unfortunately not as bad, but it's still bugging my throat a little bit, unfortunately. Wind is really picking up out there. I'll see if I actually take my walk this afternoon or if I'm going to stay in and use my machine. I prefer to take a walk outside when I can, but I also don't want to be freezing cold. Doing that a lot I think because I'm really close to the edge of the frame here there's not as much space for my my non-working threads to sit I keep catching them <laughs> my working thread Almost back to the normal diagonal shape here. I think we'll do. Oh, look at that. We're at two, two, two. Cool. Wasn't even trying to, to do that, but uh, yeah. It happened one time I stopped at six, 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 four. My husband says, Oh, you want to go watch TV? I said, No, I got to do two more stitches. So it's at, yeah, all sixes. He's like, Oh, yeah, of course you do. You know? <laughs> Yeah, he's quirky like me, so he understood immediately why I would have to do that. <laughs> okay. There we go. Unhook these from around each other. Okay, so 
think I will do these and then that's where I'm gonna call it a day. And then yeah, I think the next time I am stitching with you, I will be at the top again of this pass. We will have shifted the whole the whole frame over. end off with a knot like that. That would suck. Okay. So, pop that there. And yeah, I think that's where I'm going to take a break for today. So, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you here again another time. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye!